Hi there, my name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California, and this is Archie Corner. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to find out the allowable area for buildings, more specifically, multi-story single occupancy buildings and multi-story multi-occupancy buildings. If you haven't seen episode 38 of Archie Corner, you might get a little lost. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out. But if you want to know how to find out the allowable area for buildings, as I just described, don't go anywhere, you're about to find out. Let's start with where we left off in episode 38. If you have not watched that episode, you might get lost here, so be sure to check that out first. In that episode, we provided details on how to find out the allowable area for a single story building with a single occupancy. If you may recall, Video 38 explained in detail IBC section 506.2.1 and equation 51, which was AA equals AT plus NS times IF. That formula provides most of what you need to know to figure the allowable area per floor in a building. Today, we are going to show you how to figure out the allowable area per floor for multiple story buildings and buildings with multiple occupancies. For our first scenario, let's talk about a building with a maximum of three stories above grade in single occupancy. Finding the allowable area is simple. Per IBC 506.2.1, the allowable area per floor would be the same exact area as that which was discussed in episode 38. No change, easy, right? What if we had a single occupancy building with more than three stories above grade? This too is simple. The answer is also in IBC 506.2.1. Again, the allowable area for each floor does not change. Equation 51 remains the same for the area floor allowance per floor. But now we add a limitation. Not just the allowable area per floor, but also the allowable area for the entire building. What is the allowable area for the entire building? We start with equation 51, which is AA equals AT plus NS times IF. Note that we added SA to this equation. By the way, this equation is now equation 52 in the IBC. How difficult is it to figure out this new SA variable? Not difficult at all. This same section IBC 506.2.1 tells us, SA equals 3, where the actual number of stories above grade plane exceeds 3, or SA equals 4, where the building is equipped throughout with an automatic sprinkler system installed in accordance with section 903.3.1.2. So a quick example, if the allowable area per floor AA equals 20,000, and your building is sprinklered, then your allowable area for the building is 20,000 times 4, which equals 80,000 square feet. There are many possibilities of how this would work, but to show you just two examples. You can have a four-story building with 20,000 square feet per floor, which stays within the limits. Or you could also have a six-story building with different square footages per floor, so long as it does not exceed 80,000 square feet. These are just two examples, but it shows you that you can have as many stories as you wish so long as you stay within the floor allowable limits, the overall building area limits, and also have in mind that Table 504.4 does limit how many stories you might have. So just keep that in mind. Pretty simple, right? So now that we're talking about building limits, we can add to the first two examples that they do not have building size limits, only floor area limits. That covers multi-story buildings with a single occupancy. Now, let's move on to buildings with mixed occupancies. I wanted to take a quick pause here to thank all of my patrons. Thanks to you, I am able to create videos like this. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support. If you would like to support me, doing so through Patreon is one way of doing it. By becoming my patron, you can get at least three benefits. 
First, there's some content on Patreon that is not available here on YouTube yet. Second, before I create many of my videos, I provide a poll so that you are able to select the next video or the next subject. And third, we're still working on getting some of the sketches that you see created on these videos provided to my patrons through a PDF that can be downloaded and referenced to later. However, I know that perhaps becoming a patron could be a little scary to some. So as an alternative, if you want to just simply buy me a coffee, you can do so as well. Information to both of these items can be found in the video description. I hope you're able to support me. But for now, let's get back to the video. 506.2.2 of the 2021 IBC titled Mixed Occupancy Buildings provides us with what we need to know to figure out the allowable building area. First, let's start with non-separated occupancies. This has to do with section 508.3.2 that deals with non-separated occupancies. An entire video has been dedicated to this non-separated areas topic. You can check out episode 34 that provides more information. But to give you a quick summary, section 508.3.2 states, the allowable building area, height, and number of stories of the building or portion thereof shall be based on the most restrictive allowances for the occupancy groups under consideration for the type of construction of the building in accordance with section 503.1. What does this mean? It is actually very simple, but I need to get off topic for a minute here because IBC 506.2.2 states that we must use equation 5.3 to figure out the allowable floor area. Now, you might be confused at first because equation 5.1 and 5.3 look exactly the same. The difference between these equations, in case you're wondering, is that the definition for the variable AT includes the allowance of using SM from table 506.2. You may recall in episode 38 when we looked at this table, we used an S for non-sprinklered and S1 for sprinklered single-story buildings. Equation 5.3 just states that you can also use SM for sprinklered multi-story buildings. Again, as a reminder, the square footages shown here are just examples. You need to look at the actual IBC for the exact numbers. Okay, so getting back on topic, we still need to answer what section 508.3.2 means. All it means is that if you have two, three, or more occupancies in the building, you simply run the same exact calculations we talked about in episode 38 for each of the occupancies and whichever results in the most restrictive, that is the one you use. It's simple. As an example, if you have B and A3 occupancy groups in the same building, you will notice that table 506.2 will show that the allowable square footage per floor for A3 is usually the most restrictive between these two examples or between these two occupancies. You can have both occupancies in the building, not a problem, but A3 will oftentimes, if not always, be the limiting factor when compared to occupancy B. This is just an example. You can have many occupancy groups in a building, not just two, but the allowable area will be limited by the most restrictive group. So let's update our findings. In non-separated occupancies, we use equation 5-3 for the most restrictive occupancy group to find out our allowable area per floor. Let's talk about separated occupancies. IBC section 508.4.2 is a section for separated occupancies. Separated occupancies just means that you are providing a fire rated separation between occupancies as required by table 508.4. There is a whole episode dedicated to this topic of rated occupancies. Check out episode 32, which talks about it if you have any questions. But how do you figure out the allowed square footage in a building with separated occupancies? Section 508.4.2 states, In each story, the building area shall be such that the sum of the ratios of the actual building area of each separated occupancy divided by the allowable building area of each separated occupancy shall not exceed 1. Now, this sounds much more complicated and confusing than it is, so let's break it down. Again, First, you need to find out the allowed area for an occupancy using equation 5.3. Next, you need to know the actual area of the occupancy. And last, you need to check that the ratios do not exceed 1. 
Here's an example. Let's say that you have a building with occupancies A3, B, and S1 in the same building. And I'm just making up numbers here, but let's pretend that you're allowed the following areas. A3, 50,000, B, 100,000, and S1, 40,000 square feet. That is what you are allowed, but now you need to plug in the areas that we actually have. So let's pretend that we have the following. For A3, 10,000, for B, 50,000, and for S1, 5,000 square feet. So the ratios may look like this. When we convert the ratios into decimals and we add them up, we get a total of 0.825. Per section 508.4.2, we see that we do not exceed 1. Therefore, this is acceptable. In fact, we could make some areas a bit larger. For example, if our A3 occupancy was 15,000, we would still get a result of 0 0.925, which still does not exceed 1. And well, I think you get the idea. You can have any mix so long as the ratios do not add up to more than one. And again, just to clarify, you can mix many occupancies, not just two or three. You can have more. Last but not least, let's talk about buildings with four stories or more above grade plane. IBC 506.2.4 states, for buildings with more than three stories above grade plane, the total building area shall be such that the aggregate sum of the ratios of the actual story of each story divided by the allowable area of such stories determined in accordance with equation 5.3 based on the applicable provisions of 508.1 shall not exceed 3. The only exception to this is that if our building is sprinklered, the ratios must not exceed 4. So let's try to explain this. First, let's note that we must use equation 5-3. Let's continue with the example we had before with occupancies A3, B, and S1. We do the same as the earlier sample. The allowable square footage will not change, so let's get that first. Now, let's see what the square footages are for each floor. Now that we know what each floor has and what they are allowed, let's get the ratios. On the first floor, we get 0 0.925. On the second floor, we get 0 0.825. On the third floor, note that we don't factor in the S1 occupancy group since we don't have any, so we get 0 0.54. Similar thing on the fourth floor. We do not factor anything in for A3 or S1 because we only have B occupancy, and we get a total of 0 0.4. Note that we meet the requirement for each floor to be equal or less than one. And now let's add them up. We get a total of 2.69, which does not exceed three. Also, as a side note, please remember that the ratio may be allowed not to exceed four if it was sprinklered. Either way, we are under three, so we are good. What did you think? It's not that hard, right? I know it was a lot of jargon and a lot of codes, but hey, good job, you got through it.